Hello! In the last video, I fitted an Action Replay MK3 card into my Amiga 2000. Now if you remember, I stated it was a little bit of a pain. Firstly, it doesn't work with anything newer than Kickstart 1.3, but also the disable switch for its internal, which is totally ridiculous. Then on top of that, the cable for the controller needs to somehow get out of the case. So in this video, we're going to solve all of that and make this device much more friendly. So the first thing I want to sort out is the Kickstart, and I don't want to be swapping ROMs around, so I've bought one of these. It's a dual ROM chip that contains Kickstart 1.3 and 3.1, and it can be set manually using jumpers or with this handy switch. So how does it work? Well, I can feel through the sticker that this is an EEPROM, as I can feel the little window that allows you to erase it with an ultraviolet light. To store two Kickstarts, it would need to be larger than normal. Kickstart 1.3 is 256 kilobytes in size. If you find a ROM file, you may find it's 512k, but if you take a look inside that file, you'll discover that the first 256k is actually just repeated. Kickstart 2.0, however, takes up a full 512k, as does the later versions. So how does this chip work? Well, I'm guessing, looking at it, it's probably something like a 27C160. That's a 2MB EEPROM chip. If you take a look at the pinout for this device, we can see that it has a set of address lines and a set of data lines. Now looking at this Kickstart ROM, you can see that on the little PCB, these two pins are marked as A18 and A19. The centre two pins are connected to ground. Connecting the first two pins switches to one of the Kickstarts and the other pair to the other Kickstart. However, the switch also can just go across one set, so I'm guessing there's actually multiple copies of the ROMs on this chip. Firstly, looking at the underside, pins A18 and pin A19 don't actually go into the socket of the Amiga. A18 and A19 are pulled high by two resistors, when not connected. Mapping the memory out, then A19 would toggle between the first and the second megabyte on the chip. When combined with A18, this would allow a selection between four separate 512k areas. Now we can run its switch to the back of the machine, but there's nowhere to put a switch like that. Yet. We also need to work out what to do with the Action Replay card too. And as an update for those of you who watched my previous video with the issues I had with the slow-mo function, if you remember, I wasn't sure if I'd wired it up correctly. But since then, I've been sent some photos of the inside of an actual real Action Replay controller. And you can see three components. And there's no PCB traces on the back of the board either. With the parts desoldered from the board, this is where the variable resistor was. Tracking out those connections, you can see that I did actually guess the wiring correctly, which means there's something else wrong on my Action Replay card. I traced out the output from where the timer chip goes and it eventually ends up in one of the PLCCs, powering up the board on the bench and you can see that this pin is in fact receiving a very good signal that changes correctly, so who knows what's wrong. But let's not dwell on the slow-mo issues, after all it's only a small part of what this card can actually do. I also need to sort out enabling and disabling the card without having to open up the machine, so I need to run the connections from this switch somewhere too. The switch has three connections. One goes to 5 volts and the others go to two different PLCCs. Now I had a thought. I'm only ever going to use Kickstart 1.3 when I want to use the Action Replay. So what if I used a slightly more complex switch to control both the Action Replay and the Kickstart switch at the same time? Well, that's what I'm going to do. The other issue is I need to get the cable for the controller out of the back of the machine. As I know it only uses 5 wires, I thought maybe I could add a connector to the cable so I can remove it when it's not in use. And after a bit of playing around, I designed a new plate for the back of the machine that could house the kickstart switch, also doubling up as the enable disable action replay switch, and a space for a 5 pin DIN connector socket where I can connect the controller. So with that designed, I printed it, so let's put it all together.
with all that assembled, let's install it back into the machine. And you may have noticed I've used two spare pins on the Action Replay connector for the switch wiring. I might as well, it saves running another set of wires around the machine. Now you may have noticed I haven't installed it into the back of the machine properly yet. The reason is, I don't know if I have the switch the right way around for the kickstart version, and also I don't know if I have the enable disable for the action replay the right way around either. And by the laws of Murphy, I'm sure it's wrong. So, let's give it a test. So I have the switch in the kickstart 1.3 position, and booting up, and sure enough, it's in kickstart 1.3, that was a good guess. However, the action replay isn't responding. If I power cycle the machine and flip the switch, well, this on screen is an example of sometimes what the action replay will do on Kickstart 3.1, if it even boots at all. You can just about see it there in a dark blue colour. And sure enough, I've got the switch wired up a little bit wrong. I'm going to swap the outer wires on the action replay side of the switch and retry this. I'll do this off camera rather than moving the Amiga completely off my bench and setting it all back up again. So the next thing you're going to see is me testing this again. So retrying again, and with the Kickstart 1.3 setting, the action replay is working properly power cycling and flipping the switch, speeding this up a little bit, and eventually we get into Workbench, and the action replay is disabled. Perfect, this just leaves the job of finally installing it in the back of the machine. Well, that's a lot better. I wonder why they didn't at least provide a nicer way of getting the cable out of the machine like this. This mod certainly makes the action replay much more accessible for me, and also makes it easier for me to move the machine around too, as I can simply unplug this bit when I don't want it. Slow mo hasn't miraculously fixed itself, however, but I'm not worried about that. It is a minor detail. Oh, and one quick update for you. If you tried my disk flashback application, I've just released an update for it with a few extra features, including the Amiga PFS3 file system. I hope you found this interesting, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.